CBS presents this program in color. said, but <laughs> I may be in trouble. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, do you have a pin? <laughs> Merci. That's just an explanation for when I get home and see my mother. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You do talk. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I just wondered how you uh, chose your writing. Oh, well, actually, we, I think we have a stable of the best that are in television. And uh, we knew quite a few of them from their work. And uh, two young, younger writers that we have, we discovered off of a record album and hired them. And um, that's the way it comes about. I had worked with our head writer. He was the writer on the Gary Moore show when I was on before, Mr. Rosen. And uh, they're all just marvelous. I love them all very much. Thank you for asking. Yes, ma'am. Do you prefer a clean-shaven man to a man with a goatee? Do I prefer a clean-shaven man to a man with a goatee? I see why you're asking, because you're with that man there. I don't know. I haven't known that many men with, uh, with goatees. I, I would say, I, you know, as long as I shave, I think they should. <laughs> yes? Uh, what's your favorite food, and how much of it do you eat? Enchiladas, about 12 at a time. <laughs> Martha, come here and say hello. Any of you have any questions for Martha? <laughs> the lady there. Yes, I do. Yes, that was about, I believe, about eight or ten years ago. <laughs> ten years ago. What did you ask for? <laughs> yes. How old were you when you started dating? How old was I when I started dating? <laughs> 39, I guess. <laughs> I was, um, I never really had many dates. Uh, like, <laughs> well, the first boy who asked me out was Asher Wachowski, <laughs> and I was three, <laughs> but I didn't go because he was an older boy of six. And, uh, no, I guess around, uh, 15, 16 years old, about 10 years ago. <laughs> yes? your two Yorkshire Terriers? Do I still have my two Yorkshire Terriers? No, I don't. I gave them to a friend of mine in um, New York, and I now have um, a cat named Maud, and a uh, dog named Sam, and a canary named Yellow, uh, Yellow, 
a canary named Ladybird. And I had to. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you you look like Lisa Ross? Has anyone ever told me I look like Risa Ross? No, who's he? <laughs> hey, we do look kind of alike. Yes, we do. There are a lot of look-alikes around. Sophia Lauren, Kim uh, Novak. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. Was CBS Studios initialed after your name? Was it CBS Studios initialed after my name? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very glad you asked that. They will be on two weeks from tonight. Gary and Durward will be with us two weeks from tonight. How tall am I? I'm five feet seven. Um, and in heels, I'm five feet two. <laughs> Were you up for any part in Valley of the Dolls? Was I up for any? <laughs> Was I up for any part in Valley of the Dolls? <laughs> Yeah, but Paul Burke got it. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm sorry. First time I've seen you in person. Wow! <laughs> what you got in mind? <laughs> I'll see you after the show, kid. <laughs> Any other questions you might have? Okay, well, don't go away. We'll be right back. Television City in Hollywood. It's the Carol Burnett Show, brought to you by McLean. Now. <laughs> uh, you, you and he are happy, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> yes, well, there's one thing you can say about Philip. What's that? He married well. <laughs> your Majesty, if things are so rough economically, how come your son, Bonnie Prince Charles, just got a Rolls Royce? Oh, well, he saved up for it out of his allowance. 
How long did it take him? Three days. <laughs> Your Majesty, may I ask, what kind of, what kind of relations do you have with Charles de Gaulle? <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about Charles de Gaulle keeping you out of the common market? I don't really care. Who wants to shop with commoners anyway? <laughs> But, uh, but your majesty, don't oh, you... Oh, please, don't get me wrong. Some of my best friends are commoners. Of course, I wouldn't want my sister to marry one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, how is your sister, Margaret? As compared to whom? <laughs> uh, do you and the prince have any plans to visit the United States? Yes, next year. Ah. Yay. Uh, when you're in America next year, will you be staying at the White House? Oh, yes, this morning. Just this morning, I got an invitation from that fun couple. Well, the Johnsons may not be in the White House next year. I know. The invitation came from the Nixons. <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesty, and good night from VIP. I'm really excited to present uh, a marvelous gal and one of my favorite movie stars ever, the one and only Miss Betty Grable.
All the television shows, afternoon soap operas, enjoy the longest run and remain on the air for years. But they, too, must eventually come to an end. Tonight, let's look in on the final episode of a soap opera winding up after 15 misery-filled, scandalous years. As the stomach turns... Tell me, Marion, have you heard from your son? Which one? The one who has six months to live? The one who's getting a divorce? Or the one who is a fine country lawyer devoting his life to helping migrant farm workers? <laughs> no, the one who left Canoga Falls 15 years ago and hasn't been heard from since. Oh, that one. I forgot about him. How could a mother forget her own son? Victoria, sit down. <laughs> I have some shocking news to tell you. I, I've hidden it from you all these years, but now the truth must be told. The son who left Canoga Falls is not my son. I said he was my son to protect his dear mother. And who is his dear mother? You are, my dear. Really? Truly. You mean it? Yes. But Marion... What? I know. Yes, you did. You did. And then you got sick. You've had amnesia ever since that horrible day you were mysteriously pushed into the Canoga Falls Wait a minute. I remember. I did have a baby. A beautiful baby girl. Victoria. I must go search. I'll get it, dear. In the meantime, go into the kitchen and soak your chronic bursitis. <laughs> Why, it's Bob Baxter, the boy next door, who we all thought would never walk again, but grew into a handsome athlete, mixed up in scandal after scandal. How are you, Bob? Fine, fine. Wonderful, wonderful. Come in, dear. Tell me, when did you get out of jail? Oh, just about, uh, just about five minutes ago. Wonderful. They found out after all these years that I didn't murder Natalie Carter. Wonderful. How did they find out? Well, Natalie walked into the sheriff's office and admitted she lied at my trial. <laughs> Wonderful news. Sit down, Marion. I have some more wonderful news. Yes? I'm getting married. That's wonderful news. She's standing outside waiting to meet you. That's wonderful news. Come in, my dear. How do you do? Why, it's Connie Canoga, that no good chorus girl who trapped wealthy old man Canoga, the founder of Canoga Falls, into marriage. Why, it's Marion Clayton, the frustrated gossip who I don't have to talk to anymore now that I'm a wealthy widow. Oh, but I will. Yes, I will. How are you, Marion? So, 
<laughs> you and Bob are getting married. And only three and a half days after old man Canoga died. Why did you wait so long? Well, we would have gotten married yesterday, but uh, well, we were afraid people would talk. Well, I had another reason for coming by. Yes? I have news about your son. <laughs> The one who has six months to live, the one who's getting a divorce, or the no, one who's a fine... the one you haven't heard from in 15 years. Do you know anything about him? Do I know anything about him? I am him. So you're not Bob Baxter? No, I'm Bob Clayton, your son. <gasps> My mother-in-law. <laughs> Mom! Oh, no. <laughs> You're not Bob Clayton, my son. You're Bob Fieldson, Victoria's son. Victoria who? Victoria Fieldson. You mean that weirdo that has amnesia? Yes. <laughs> but she has amnesia no more. <laughs> Victoria, Victoria, come out. Your son is here. Son. Mom. <laughs> I knew I dressed you funny. <laughs> but I thought you'd get over it. No, no, Victoria, dear. This isn't your son. That's your son. Mom. Son. Mom! Will you not get off that, your mom? <laughs> mom! <laughs> Stop. Stop pushing. This is the way you pushed me into the Canoga Falls Falls. <laughs> Victoria, you mean you knew it was she all these years and you never said anything? Why? <laughs> because she knew I'd kill her if she told anybody I tried to kill her. You... <laughs> you... You tried to kill me? Why? Because Why? I... But Why? <laughs> Look, just one question at a time, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Sit down, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, Marion. <laughs> This is my story. Some years ago, some years ago, when I was Noble Falls, penniless and poor. I was a dance hall girl. And oh, how I suffered. There was no dance hall in Canoga Falls. <laughs> but it was then that I, that I met Franklin Forbes. Franklin Forbes. Why is that name familiar? <laughs> he was your husband. <laughs> oh, him. Yes, and I, I fell in love with him deeply, hopelessly, madly, passionately. I liked him a lot. But, oh, he fell in love with you, Victoria. Oh, yes, he fell in love with you, Victoria. <laughs> just because, just because you were a little prettier and, uh, and uh, a little younger. <laughs> That's not true, my dear. I was a lot prettier. <laughs> Why, you miserable no, please. thing? Please. please. It's all in the 
the past, and now we must search for tomorrow as the world turns. <laughs> That's the telephone. <laughs> Hello, thank you, Herb. Thank you for calling. That's wonderful news. Goodbye. <laughs> I have wonderful news. My son is not getting a divorce from his hippie wife after all because she promised to shave and get a job. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. Yes. When I was in the kitchen, the doctor came to the back door. He did? <laughs> and you know your son? Yes. The one they give six months to live? Yes. Well, the doctor says he's improving. Oh. They now give him seven months. <laughs> Two mothers' prayers have been answered. I don't want to argue, Victoria. Now all of us in Canoga Falls are happy. You, Victoria, you have your son and your amnesia is gone. And you, Mom, you found a real mother. And a married for real mother. And you, you rich lady, Canoga, you're the lucky. And he is in 15 years. Not once has he come up those stairs. Yes, it's been quite a breather. Felicia, <laughs> 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 darling! I finished the song. We're going to be rich, man. Oh, that's wonderful, darling. Now we can leave Crummy Canoga Falls. Can we say that again? <laughs> Sing the song, darling. That's wonderful. Sing the song for us all. Don't rush me, I've got plenty of time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first annual Beautiful Legs Contest. Tonight, your applause will decide on who, uh, who on this week's show owns the shapeliest legs. I, of course, have not entered, otherwise there would be no contest. <laughs> <laughs> We've narrowed the contestants down to the final five. Now, if you folks in the studio audience will indicate your choice by applause, we will have ourselves a winner in no time at all. Can we see the contestants? Righty. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. May we reveal our contestants, please, for the <laughs> Stay tuned now for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show, following station identification.
And now, back to the second half of The Carol Burnett Show. What do you say, Bridget? How about one before you turn in? Okay, Maggie. There you are, sweetheart. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you look at that mini skirt? Four inches above the knee. I had a skirt like that when I was a kid. Well? Yeah, but I didn't call it a mini skirt. Hmm. No, I call it a hand me down. Yeah. Hey, Maggie, who was it who said, Youth is wonderful, too bad it's wasted on the young? I think it was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> you something. Suppose you could live your life all over again. Would you change anything? Why, oh, I, I guess I'd do some of the good things a little better. And the bad things? Well, I guess I'd do some of them a little better, too. Flings. Flings are wonderful things. And they've got to be flung. But someday when your springs are sprung, then it's nice to have someone to chat with, sit around with, scratch your back with, any hand which hold your sandwich you can love. Flings, flings are wonderful things. When you're young, you can whoop. But someday when your feathers droop Then it's nice to have a bird to chirp with Have a beer with Have a burp with Though it's quiet when you try it Gee, it's nice When some Romeo would twinkle Why, my skin just used to tingle now just bring me Rip Van Winkle And it's love What they say is the truth There is nothing like you When you're right at your peak But someday when your hinges creak If there's fire in the guy, he'll lose it If he had it who could use it? So you sit there while the darn canary sings. Just one of those things. And remembering flings. Flings are wonderful things. But they have to be flung by the young. As a gal, you start seething. Over guys just finished teething. Now, if they're alive and breathing, well, that's enough. At a hundred and nine, any gal can do fine. If she'd only resign, that she is a sweet at all. If she thrill him, it might kill him. <laughs> so just sit there, counting pains and saving streams. And remembering flings. Flings are wonderful things. Every family has its favorite relatives, and for Roger and Chrissy and me, it was my Aunt Molly and Uncle Bert. 
They were an ordinary average couple, except for the fact that they were in their 90s and they'd been fighting for most of their 60 married years. They said they'd be here at 7 o'clock and it's nearly 8. Well, there's nothing to worry about. Well, of course there is. A man of Uncle Bert's age shouldn't be driving a car. Well, now, don't worry about it. Uncle Bert's a very good driver. How can a 92-year-old man be a very good driver? Well, why not? Be silly. He needs a safety belt just to walk. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They'll be here any minute. Well, if he gets tired driving, I hope he has enough sense to pull over and take a nap. On a five-mile trip? <laughs> you guys knock it off. Everything's all right. Aunt Molly's with him, and she drives. Oh, that's a big relief. She's only 91. <laughs> oh, well, maybe by the time they're here, they'll be too tired to fight. Never. They're the Ralph and Alice Cramden of the Stone Age. <laughs> that may be them now. Oh, here, I take the paper. We'll get the door. Oh, Uncle Bert. Hi, Uncle Bert. Hi, Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert. <laughs> Bert, we, we were worried about you. Oh? What? Worried. Why should I be worried? Uh, how are you, Uncle Bert? Well, you don't have to shout, dearie. That's my good ear. Sorry. How are you? Huh? <laughs> how are you? Oh. <laughs> well, I'll be able to answer that tomorrow. I'm seeing my doctor for a complete checkup. Oh, when was the last time you saw him? Yesterday. <laughs> well, why don't you come in and sit down, Uncle Bird? Huh? I said sit down. Thank you. No! <laughs> Maybe you'll be more comfortable on the couch, Uncle Bird. Well, that sounds like a good idea. There you are. Could you give me a little shove? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uncle Bert, where's uh, Aunt Molly? I don't know, and I don't care. We're separated. Again? Well, we just don't get along. That's ridiculous, Uncle Bert. You've been married for 60 years. I'm glad I found out in time. Well, where is she now? Oh, she's taking the bus over here, the dum-dum. For some reason, she doesn't trust my driving. You know, I'd better go over to the bus stop and wait for Aunt Molly. Uh, do you want me to go? No, no, that's all right. I'll go. I'll be right back. What? Uh, be right back! Where am I going? <laughs> Nowhere. Well, then I shouldn't be too long. <laughs> Uncle? <laughs> Thank you, nephew. I'm feeling a little restless. Well, that's why. Why don't you just take a little turn around the room, Uncle Bert? Chris, I'll, I'll yeah, try. Have some tea, will you? Okay. Hmm. Say, where's Carol? Oh, uh, she left. Was it anything I said? <laughs> no, Uncle Bert. She went to pick up Aunt Molly. Aunt Molly? Your Aunt Molly's an old frump. Oh, now, you stop that, Uncle Bert. She loves you. <sighs> uh. <laughs> you know what she did to me yesterday? She protested against me. She what? Protested. She stood right in front of me and burned her Social Security card. <laughs> I'll found her anyway. I'll take it easy, Uncle Bert. Well, she makes me so darn mad sometimes. You know, I tell you, one of these days, I'm going... Uh-oh. <laughs> Would you like to sit down, Uncle Bert? I thought I was. Right over here. Now, come right over here oh. on the couch. Thank you. Because he's making some tea. Here, here's it. Here's Hi, it. Uncle Bert. Shall I pour you a cup of tea? Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Oh, wait there just one second. Roger, <clears throat> do you have a little something to spice it up? Sure, Uncle, I'm sure I could find something. Uh, scotch? Vodka will be fine. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Chrissy. Spice first, then the tea. <laughs> I say when, Uncle. Ha, 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 ha. When? <laughs> it's for my heart. <laughs> what are you trying to do, stimulate it or preserve it? Well, that's funny, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> do 
her a treat, Roger. Thanks, son. All right, Chrissy. There's no room. Well, then, never mind. <laughs> well, arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> that hit the spot. <laughs> drinking tea again. Pushing 70. <laughs> She's pushing about 20 years behind her. It's good to see you, Aunt Molly. Hey. Oh, don't kiss her, Roger. You'll get your lips all wrinkled. <laughs> Look who's talking. Malcolm Medicare. Is that so? Well, there's a lot of fire left in this old ticker. That ain't fire, it's heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> Here, yo fool, wake up. <laughs> wake up. Come on. That was a nice little nap. Here, here. here. Uh, oh, my word. Oh, that's terrible. Here you go. Thank you, dear. Tippy Canoe and Tyler, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> You know, I had the most marvelous dream. Oh. <laughs> I dreamt that we were young again, you and I. Oh, Shaw. Sure. I saw you as you were in your lovely white dress on our 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, go on. You were a pretty young thing back then. Well, <laughs> you weren't so bad yourself. <laughs> 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 You're not still mad at me? No. <laughs> How about little reconciliation kiss, huh? Dirty old man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I...
squeal on old Willie the wheel. He drove the car for the mob. While we were out gunning, he'd keep the car running and drive us away from the job. One day on a stick-up, he parked on a hill, but his brakes wouldn't hold at the top. He'd be with us still, but he rolled down the hill and illegally parked on a cop. to go was old Artie Nubro. He was the counterfeit king. The bills he made were of such high really grade. They looked just like the genuine thing. And at last he was ready to make an attempt to pass off the bills in a store. But his trouble came when in exchange for a ten he gave someone two trees and a four. to chew the explosive and fuse to make each job start off with a bang. Then one day he went to knock over a bank by blowing a hole in the wall. But the dynamite charge was a trifle too large. And the cops picked him up in St. Paul and Detroit and Chicago. Part of Uncle Bert was played by William Shallow. The Carol Burnett Show has been brought to you by. Ajax Spray Cleaner, specially formulated to help protect against streaking. <laughs>